falls around the corner and some of the first fish that come off the ledges come back here and set up on cover or little break lines or stumps or whatever you've got back in a shallow flat leading them to that true fall pattern. That's what we're after. You know, the KVD 1.5, doggone, it's just become my go-to square bill crankbait. It's got a lifelike action, good wobble, good thump to it, and then it's got a searching action that really turns those fish on. My favorite things about it is when I get it by a piece of cover, I'll stop it and erratically retrieve my reel. That gets that bait off of kilter, and it almost acts like a jerk bait. It's probably the, what I would call the four-wheel drive ATV model of all crankbaits in that it is so weedless and bounces through cover so well. Um, great size, great action, great performance with the KVD 1.5. We're on Barkley Lake today, and you can see there's nobody out here. I've got a six foot eight inch Team Lose rod that's a very quick tip rod. It's perfect for top waters, little crankbaits, jerk baits, and I'm utilizing it with uh, a Team Lose Tournament Pro in a seven to one. And I really got this thing whistling. I'm fishing really fast, trying to get a reaction bite. Using monofilament today, using 15 pound Seaguar Cinchy monofilament to give myself a little lag time. Fishing this quick, I, I, monofilament's not quite as sensitive as uh, fluorocarbon. I need a little bit of time for that fish to get that bait. I'm gonna be crashing it through rocks and uh, brush piles and stake beds and all kinds of man-made cover. And that little bit of spring that you get from monofilament will help, help that bait come through there. And if one eats it, it gives it a chance for that fish to eat the whole bait and you not take it away from it. This bait is so versatile in its application. I mean, you can slow roll it slowly around cover. You can speed reel it across riprap, gravel points. You can fish it for suspended fish under boat docks. Um, just any way you want to fish it, this bait is a fish catching the low bait. It comes in a multitude of colors. Perch colors, chartreuse, catawachi, splatterback, gizzard shad. all very effective whatever watercolor you're needing them in. Coming down the side of that boat dock right there, you can speed it up and give it an erratic action and that will help pull those fish that are hiding back in the shade under the floats. It'll help pull them to your bait. On oh, a good piece of cover like this, there's a big log laying under there coming off the bank. Make multiple casts to it. Just roll it in there, set it in there, make, make multiple casts. Sometimes it takes a little coaxing to get them to come out after it. I've cast 40, 50 times at a piece of wood that I really think should have a fish on it. And sometimes you're rewarded by being persistent. A particular Elite Series tournament at West Point a couple years ago, I stayed on a tree and stayed on it and stayed on it. Sat down and ate a sandwich. First cast I stood back up, caught a four pounder. Stayed for 20, more, 20, 30 more cast, caught a second four pounder. Those benefits pay well. And all with the square bill crankbait. Got some big old rocks laying up there in front of me and see how I took that rod tip and helped get it over those rocks without getting hung. Gotta fish it around. I can see multiple rocks in the area. I'm gonna drop my power poles right here. We're gonna sit here. Sit here a minute and fish this. There's a lot of rock right here, a lot of area. There's a lot of bait in here. So stop your boat, make multiple casts, multiple presentations to a likely looking place like this. Speed it up, slow it down. Always do something different. And as soon as you get a bite, that can be your telltale sign of how you need to present that bait to the fish piece of cover like this, a target like this, is penetrate the outside edges. Go outside and then in. And because I don't want them to throw up there and get hung and foul the area. So I'll let the boat ease in there and then I'm gonna drop my poles, but I'm gonna start casting around the perimeter. We'll see if that can't draw a strike from a fish on the edge. Then I'll go to the heart of the cover and wind the bait through there. 
right where he should have been. Right where he should have been. Right on the inside part of that wall, breaking that current. Make that same cast. Anytime you catch a fish like that, always, always make those casts. Make that same presentation again. His best buddy might be there and it could be a big one. Decent fish. I made that very same cast. And look, I got another bass. It's not a big one, but it's another bass. That's one of the most important lessons in fishing. If you make a successful presentation, make it again. You never know. He could have, well, he could have weighed his length. That could have been an eight pounder instead of an eight incher. You never can tell. Always make that same cast again. Decent fish. Had to change the angle. I'd made four or five casts through there. He's wearing that little bait pretty good. He's gonna try to jump. Showed himself. You see how black he is when I get him up here. Look at him. Get him. KVD 1.5. You can see by bouncing it around cover through cover and over cover, it'll help you catch them too. And you can find this bait at Tackle Warehouse. Tour grade buzz bait. Simple bait, but a big fish catching bait. It can be awful exciting to catch them on a buzz bait. It's probably my weakest part of my fishing game because I jerk too fast. Good one blows up on it, I try to take it away from him. Just reflexes. You can see it's got a good body to it, decent bill angle to it, and it creates a very wide wobble. If you'll watch my rod tip right here, you can see how much vibration that that bait puts off. It's a good size bait. It's got a good profile in the water, and with that wide vibration and a good loud rattle, it really calls a fish from a long way.